Hi, this is Richard Close, and welcome to How to Create a Digital Autobiography Story. Uh, this started back in 2011, where UNESCO gave us some seed money to do a portal for African youth called I Am Africa, This Is My Story. The photographs you are all about to see throughout this course are from uh, that visit to Africa and the workshops. Um, Lusafka High School students re-engineered our course for us and turned it into a format where they could adapt to at a very fast rate, and that is an interview. So this is basically project-based learning interview um, where the student uses just uh, themselves, another person reading a script, and a camera. So let's take it from there. These wonderful kids are from the Kenya Rift Valley, and this is the copyright page. The way this all started was a group of women in a small village in Zambia back in 2003 said, tell our story. When Americans come and visit here, they really don't understand who we are. And so that's what this is about. An autobiographical digital story is a nice long word, but basically think of it as a interview on the news of someone interviewing you about your life. There are three basic things that you're going to do. One, it's going to give you an opportunity to tell your story. Two, it's going to give you a chance to reflect. Um, what was my story about? What was my path? How far did I come? And three, is to say thanks. And this course is designed to help you figure out how to do that. The technology used to do this is really quite simple. Um, any cell phone that records a video that you can upload it um, will do the trick, or you can uh, upload it into a PC and from there upload it into YouTube. You will need a YouTube account, and we will give you the tags to put on it, and you will need to join uh, I Am The Story. All of this is for free. If you want to get more elaborate with your editing and front page and titles, um, you are more than welcome to use something like uh, iMovie or Microsoft Movie Maker, one of those tools that are also for free. All of this is free to join the account and do all of this uh, except for your connect time. One of the reasons of joining the community is it gives you the ability to download the free training guides and there's two of these guides that you should download. One guide is on how to tell a story, and the other one will help you in terms of producing it with software, if that's the route you want to go. There also is an interview guide that you can download. That's really a must, because that gives you the questions to ask your interviewee as we do this project. So let's go through the steps of how to do one of these interviews. Uh, first, pull down your things from the portal. Second, download your guides, which we've covered. Three, you'll need three people. The first person reads the question, the second person will shoot the video, and the third person will interview. Now, one of the rules that we give is that someone does not have to be interviewed, but that person can easily uh, be behind the camera or ask the questions. Um, sometimes the students want to see what it's like to be recorded just to see, and then delete it afterwards. There should be no intimidation or pressure whatsoever to keep that video or publish it, but it's fun for them to take a look at it and let them personally delete it so they know it's deleted. So this is all you need to get the interview program going. Um, you can usually do the whole interview in one pass without any editing. Almost all of these interviews that the students did were done in that format, which is perfectly okay. Once my recording stops, I would like you to just stop here and read each one of these points out loud. They're extremely important. As I said, these photographs were taken while we're doing the interview process. And you can see she's very smiley, her eyes are open, her head's up. It's going to be a good video shot, and everyone's going to have fun. The second we start to be smart aleck, or horse around, or tease. What you'll see is the eyes begin to close, the head goes down, and the person clams up on the interview. So 
these things about embarrassing questions, ask them who their boyfriend is or whatever like that, um, can throw the whole interview off, even though if you think you can cut it out, but it will destroy the quality of what you want to get out. So have fun, be positive and encouraging. Again, stop. Here are some important rules. Read each one of these out loud so they're in your head because your youth and the temptation is to horse around. But when you hurt feelings, you will not get a good video. And we want great videos. Okay, this is typical what your little group's going to look like. You have one person holding a camera, a person interviewing, a um, person reading the script, and another, another person there just kind of supervise, see how things are all going. Now you have two basic type of shots that you want to do. You don't want to do a far away shot because then people really can't see the eyes of the faces. Again, think of what you watch on an evening news on a interview. You have a center uh, shoulder shot and a center face but you can also use another interesting way of shot and you see these in movies a lot called a three-quarter shot it's based on a little circle there called a Fibonacci design now the three-quarter shot is great because you can see here's the boy but I pick up the environment around the boy the thing to watch out for if you do this shot you must have a quiet space so this is great to do like in a classroom where you can see a blackboard that's in the background make sure you're very very careful on what's in that background because you don't want it photobombed or something silly written on the blackboard and you do not want to do these type of shots outside particularly if it's in a city maybe in a country or rural setting where it's quiet is okay but in the city the noise from the cars and dialogues and that type of thing will be picked up by your teeny mic and it'll be hard to hear the person in the interview let's talk about lighting Africa it's very bright and when you're um, recording faces that are of darker skin it's best to shoot more in the morning or in the evening when you shoot lighting in the middle of the day and the light is beaming on the top of the head the eyes tend to get very dark so what we did um, here in Lesotho University is we shot in the middle of the day but we shot under trees or in the shade and you can see she's in the shade and you can see just from this photograph the light is bouncing everywhere so even though she's in a shade uh, digital cameras are very sensitive and it'll pick up the whole uh, face so the question that sits in your back of the mind is can I see the eyes because the eyes are the most expressive part of the interview now we'll talk about sound if there's one thing that kept us from posting um, videos more than anything else was sound and noise you have to stand close enough to the person so when they are talking um, you can pick it up you really need to tell people to encourage them to speak up by the way when people lift their head back and they smile they naturally speak up so encouraging them to have fun will get them to do that this particular photograph was done in Zambia at a youth group and it was so noisy as you can tell from the horns that we did do a couple of videos but each one of those videos we took people away from the group and we took them into classrooms that were quiet that were about oh only 50 feet away it also gave us a great background and smooth lighting at the same time so watch out for noise watch out for street noise people having conversations so on and so forth it's perfectly okay to walk around your area and just say please we're recording right now and people will respect that at least they should okay always always look and listen um, not only doing this before you walk away or end the recording session but like I said in the lighting and sound area do a test okay so just to have the person answer one question we're going to do a test take a look at it and by the way if they see themselves in a recording like you see here they usually laugh and there's a lot more fun and loose with the recording as it goes on 
So um, test it, make sure your sound levels are okay, your lights uh, are okay, and from there, move on before you close out. And now for some story tips. Uh, we do have a printed script, but you don't have to follow it word per word. In different locations, um, different people had some uh, slightly different questions about historical things. For instance, this is a high school. Kids are really more concerned about what their parents are like in early years, where, where they, what they did to get where they are in college. Um, there might be a question about how did you get into college, how did you afford it, what did you have to do to stay there. So um, you can add or change a couple of questions. For, remember, you want to keep this really short, maybe the whole thing down to three or four minutes. So don't get too complicated and don't get uh, too deep or personal. Give the person lots of slack to give whatever they want to um, put out. Okay. So two people have to think about what they're doing here. One is the interviewer, and the other is the interviewee, which is you. So you need to think a little bit about your story before you do it. Um, again, to be very professional. But let's take a look at some of those questions so you can think about it. First of all, we start off with my name. My name is uh, Brenda. Uh, I am Africa, and this is my story. All of them start that way. And what was the situation? What was my roots like? Um, who helped encourage me? You can pause here and just read through these questions because in a little while we're going to drill down in each one of them to help give you some ideas. Remember, be professional. Being professional having good manners has an interesting side effect. Being professional having good manners makes the interviewee feel safe, that you won't pry or embarrass them. And for that reason, their eyes will come open. What we found later on in these um, videos is the degree of professionalism and well manners that the students had. Um, the other people were taking great pride in their story they had to tell, and it really comes out across on the film. And uh, we hope you have fun with that. And of course, have fun. Now when you have great manners and professionalism, people open up and the class will have a lot of fun, guaranteed you. Storytelling has deep roots in Africa and in many other countries around the world. And for people to see and students to share where they came from, how they got there, and the work it took to be there um, is a great bonding experience. So have fun, keep it safe for everybody. As you can see in this photograph, this class took the questions that are on the right and wrote some of their own or modified them, which again is perfectly okay. The key thing here is the series of the questions that the interviewer are doing is more like a guide to help the person within around four minutes tell their life story, and you'd be amazed that they can do it in that short of a period of time. So again, you are just guiding them along. You're not cutting them off or pushing them ahead or if they don't want to do a particular question, drilling down on it. It's basically just to guide them along on how to tell their story. And if they go ahead, it's perfectly okay. Just have fun. This is an interactive page, so I don't need to talk you through it. Just click on the questions. So what I want you to do is read the question and think in your mind, how would your friend or student react to that question? Are they going to open up and have fun with it, or are they going to shut down? So click on the boxes and see what happens for each one.
Here's a sample of some of the work you're going through. Okay. We're, we're uh, going in the count of three, two, one, go. My name is Julia Fasani. I am in Africa. This is my student. The next six slides of this course are going to help you drill down and reflect a little bit about how you might want to respond. First we always start with my name is Richard and this is my story and you talk a little bit about where you came from, family community was like, roots, um, and maybe an organization or religion or whatever, whether you were a farming town or a city, but give them a feeling of where you came from. Everybody has a story to tell. There's none that are big and none that are small, but they are all describing a series of events. So family issues, education, remote locations, talking about the resources that you have, what status you were in society, or whatever. But we all start from somewhere, end up, end up somewhere else by a series of events, and this is what happened. All reporting and journalism is really a format of storytelling, the same as it's been around for tens of thousands of years. So what you'll see in these questions, it goes through a basic journalistic format, which is who, what, when, where, and how. And investigative journalism goes into deep into why, and we're leaving that to the side. That's for the audience to decide why, but we will go through these. So the next thing would be, who helped in these challenges or these events you had to overcome? Were they teachers? Were they a mentor? Was it someone in the family or a friend? Who were those people that helped you along the way? What kind of advice did they give you to do it? How is one of the great questions in journalism. So how'd you do it? What happened? Uh, I changed my life because I did, oh, education, family, job, uh, athletics, whatever, and I worked really hard at all of it. But what was it that changed your life? How did you do it? What's the next thing you need to cover? So what happened? Um, what happened next is one of the great questions um, in journalism and particularly in storytelling. Just think of when someone was sitting next to you at a restaurant or a cafeteria and they started to tell the story and they cut off short. Your first reaction is, well, and, and then what happened? What was the result of this particular event that you went through? So what did I learn from all that? Strife in life are the big character builders. Every single time we hit a challenge and we accomplish it, we change. Even if we lose at it, we change. So what did you learn? In what way did you have that makes you new and improve? And a great question for this is, do you have advice for other people? You'll see this in some of the YouTubes that are up there. It's a great thing. Why is always about what motivates people? Why is the hard question, but the most interesting one? So why did you go through all of this? Pride, pay the wills, was just the next thing to do. Um, sometimes it's just simple survival. Uh, one of my good friends is one of the lost boys of Sudan, who went through several genocides, then was placed in a all-white school in the Midwest of America and high school and had to graduate and now he's finishing up his PhD. So there's a big why, you know, what is it that's inside of him that made him press through all those things and he's a, a remarkable young man now. 
also married and with a kid. And this is how we're going to close out our interview. We'll close out by giving thanks. No matter if you're an old person like me or you're only 16 years old, there are people that helped you along the way and it's a great opportunity to give them thanks, particularly when some of your people that are close to you will happen to see these videos. So friends, parents, organizations, whoever helped you along the way, it's time at the end of thanking them for that help. So how do I know when a story is really any good? This photograph is a man that's a supervisor of hundreds of churches in the Rift Valley of Kenya that have been uh, gone through strife with many riots, terrible changes. His story is really quite remarkable. But his story is very sincere and it's encouraging. You learn lessons from it. It's appropriate and professional. There's no language or whatever that we couldn't show it and it hurts no one. On hurts no one a key thing is if something terrible happened in your storyline you want to share it don't use a name or a place like my uncle did this or something like that. Those type of videos can't be shown and it should inspire us and the more honest and transparent you are the more believable you are the more person watching it says wow where's this gonna person gonna be in 10 years from now? one last thing now I know the objective here is to make a video that's one objective but the second one is to learn how to act and behave as a professional team professional teams do great work that is sustainable that lasts over time so what I'd like to do is talk about a way on how to critique someone there is the old technique it's called the sandwich technique is that I tell you the works really nice and then I tell something very critical about it and that's not a great technique to use. A technique the used is on the next slide and we'll talk about that. Let's go into this RISE model of feedback. RISE, R-I-S-E, reflect, inquire, suggest, and evaluate. Of course that only works in English. So let's see how that might work with doing one of these videos. Let's say we see someone shooting a video and they're shooting it right out in the bright sun and their eyes are dark, what you call raccoon eyes, and there's a halo on top of their head, but everything else seems to be going really great and they're having fun. Well, we could say, you know, it looks good, but you know, the whole thing with the sound, the way you have the lighting done, it's just really, they look terrible. That's a compliment along with a criticism that's not going to be very opening up to anybody. Let's take a look at how to do it this way. I might approach with them and say, hey, you know, I looked at this video and the script is great and the sound is great and she's really giving some terrific answers. But you know, I was thinking maybe we could brighten up her eyes a little bit, make the light look a little, a little better. Let me show you this other video that they did. Because see them over there? They're shooting in the shade of that tree. And take a look in their lens and all of you can see this. And so as they go over and they take a look in the lens, they go, aha! So they're learning the information themselves based on their own will and desire. And then encouragement. I bet you if we shoot it a second time, she'll be even better with her answers. We know that we'll get the sound right but we'll really be able to see into her eyes how she tells her story and encourage them to do it a second time or a third time. So do you see the difference? The key thing about this type of thinking, it's collaborative. Collaborative thinking, I have a group of people and rather than dealing with just one person's ideas, everyone is open, free, and encouraged to not only contribute but to learn from one another. So this methodology is really a methodology of professionalism. It is the way it works in Madison Avenue advertising agencies and major corporations, but it is also just polite for a family discussion. So I encourage you to use this method and practice it as we work together as a team. Nobody should ever be critical of someone else's work. 
Sometimes people that do the smallest stories in life have the biggest to, to contribute and change the most amount of people. You never know from where someone is right now where they're going to be in the future. So we put this whole free program together for you to go make some noise. You know this started from a conversation I had a long time ago with someone who ran a youth group in Zambia. And he was really disappointed. He says, you know, the press give this whole idea of African youth that's just poverty and violence and all these terrible things. So when people come here, they really don't have an accurate view that we're really involved in hard work and creativity and raising families. So we put together this portal and this program for your voice to be heard. That's why it's free. So here you are. You have it. Go make some noise. This is Richard Close. Thank you for going through this course. You've completed it. Actually, you really haven't completed it until you create your own video. So I look forward to seeing all your videos. Please email me through IamTheStory.org. Join it. And hope to see you shout out to the world.